Well, good morning. It's 7.30 and I'm all packed up and ready to go. Feeling a little beat up after the effort of mountain climbing yesterday, but got a lot of ground to cover today, so no opportunity to lay in bed and rest up. Hoping to hike up over into Half Moon Park and down Dearborn River and up over Welcome Creek Pass. Quite a lot of ground to cover, so better get at it. Let's go. Working my way up over the Green Fork Divide as the sun is coming up over the ridge and lighting up that enormous wall. It's on the other side of the valley. It's beautiful. Hiking along in the morning and just came across this pretty fresh bear scat. It's not quite steaming, but it's not very old. I gotta be on my guard. Made it past that knife point of the long arm that comes down from Scapegoat Mountain. And it looks like I have to climb over that mountain to get into Half Moon Park. Well part of my thinking in staying at the pond last night was not being too sure whether there would be a decent campsite over here but that looks like a beauty even from this distance and would have a decent view. Well, I keep saying I gotta climb over that mountain into Half Moon Park, but this is Half Moon Park. I had to refresh my memory by looking at my GPS. I still have to climb over that mountain though. Boy, the trail up over this divide really does get you up close and personal. To that wall. Pretty impressive. Well, I've reached the end of this massive wall and it's taken me a little over an hour to hike the whole length of it. You know, the number one tourist destination in the Bob is the Chinese Wall. And speaking as someone who has hiked both the north and the south halves of the wall, I can tell you from experience that it is no more impressive than this. The only thing the Chinese wall has that's different is that it's the longest of these reef-like structures. But that's a little misleading because it's actually a series of half moons just like this. And so really hiking along it is not much different at all. If you ever look at the map of the Bob, there's probably 50 to 100 of those reef-like structures, so it's a little silly that so many people flock to that one place when there are so many awesome sheer walls to experience like this. And that is where I'm going next. So there's more to it.
I've reached the trail junction and this trail heads off along the second chunk of the wall down in that valley and all the way up over that shoulder of the mountain but I'm dropping down on this trail which should go to the Dearborn River this sign has certainly seen better days Well, I'm glad it's still morning and there's a bit of a cool breeze coming up this gully because this is the trail for the next two miles or so at least. Far enough away now that I can see the actual top of Scapegoat Mountain where I was yesterday. The trail got a little faint here. Thankfully there's no doubt about which way to go. You are looking at the headwaters of the Dearborn River. Right up under Scapegoat Mountain. Well, I reached the junction with the Telephone Creek Trail, and it's about four miles down this way to the Welcome Creek Cabin. And I'm pretty happy with that trail. It was actually easy to follow and pretty well defined except for the, just that one little bit where it was still pretty obvious to go since it wasn't the main route of in the guidebook I was concerned that it might not be a good trail but no problems well the telephone creek trail is boring but super easy from that junction all downhill and you can really motor fast so far there's this enormous park area just down a little ways from that Cave Creek Junction and right now it's a little over 80 degrees and it's kind of hot and miserable but right next to the Dearborn River there I can imagine if it was late in the day this would be a fine place to camp. Made it to the Welcome Creek Cabin and it's uh, and I'm about 20 minutes early from what I planned to be here so that trail went really fast coming down along the Dearborn River. Making it to this cabin means I've connected up with the CDT again and I get to follow it for a whopping eight tenths of a mile before turning off to head up the Welcome Creek Pass. Flies are pretty bad today and it's sort of a hot and sticky day, <laughs> case in point. So uh, this little bit of shade is kind of bliss, but you don't get to hang out long in any one place. Well, I bought this hat specifically because it had this sunshade attachment to it, even though I've never actually used it. But if ever there was a day for it that made it appropriate, it would be today. And sure enough, there's the sign I was looking for. The trail climbs pretty steeply here, heading up towards Street Creek Pass. That sign down there is the junction between Street Creek and Welcome Creek. And it looks like Street Creek Pass is heading up that way. And Welcome Creek is over here. And only, I believe, it's only about 400 feet elevation gain, so pretty mild 
relatively speaking. Well, that's Welcome Creek Pass from the other side. Unfortunately, when you get done with that, the work isn't all over. There's rolling country and have to climb and go back down 500 feet here and there. Here's some more of the rolling country once you get over that first knob. Here's the next valley. Hoping I just follow that on down and around the corner there. Ladies and gentlemen, the famous Smith River. Just below where I crossed, just now, looks like the start of a beautiful canyon, which would be kind of difficult to see. Well, here's another lovely park area. Be nice to camp, except that the Smith River is still in a deep canyon right there. that goes on for a really long time. I bet it's magnificent if you could get down in there to see it. And here we are at another ford of the Smith River. I know I keep joking about it being a famous Smith River. It really is. There's people who uh, put in for a lottery to float the Smith River farther downstream, of course. But it really is remarkable for the rock formations, the canyon, little falls here and there, and pools. And here's another Smith River Ford. Looks like we're just on the edge of grazing country. And there's uh, falls right there too. Hope I can get a shot of that. Apparently we are now crossing the Bar F Ranch property. Man, I can't imagine how awesome it would be to own a ranch right up against the Bob like that. Last ford of the Smith River. Well, I've reached the junction with the Petty Creek Trail and I'm about an hour past my time that I figured to get here. So that's my 15 mile goal. But it's 6 o'clock and of course I'm thinking it's just 3 miles more to be back at the trailhead and could spend the night in the truck. 
So I think I'm gonna push on because if I stopped here, what would I do? It's actually the area I thought would be a great campground is a milling ground for the cattle for that ranch. Even got a salt block there, so that would be, not be a good place to hang out. So judging by the map, I assume that would be a really great place to camp tonight. Looked like just a no-brainer that would be a, a campsite there somewhere at the junction of those two rivers. But that entire meadow is full of cow poop, so there is there are no options. There's even cow poop on the trail up here. It's too bad too, because it's a beautiful setting. Look, wildlife. <laughs> Get out the bear spray. Well, despite the barnyard smell, this is a delightful bit of peace up uh, near the top, I hope, of the crossover on Petty Creek. Well, it's just about a mile and a half to go. Unfortunately, it's another 500 feet elevation gain, which if I remember correctly, just back from that branching off on this Petty Creek Trail, makes a total of 1,100 feet. I gotta double check that to make sure, but that's quite a slog late in the day. And I uh, finally had to pull out the knee brace. Just a little twinge, it's not uh, too bad, but it's been three pretty strenuous days, so I can't complain too much. There was a really nice campsite right at the, where the trail crossed Petty Creek, and it was awful tempting to set up there I uh, hate to stop so close to home, but on the other hand, that campground might be full when I get there, and uh, I might regret not stopping. But, of course, the one place that was a good campsite already had cow poop spread around in it. I forget that that is just a fact of life in this Rocky Mountain Front area, even though there is tons of gorgeous country to explore. Uh, you almost always end up dealing with ranchers and uh, cattle uh, with uh, uh, grazing rights. And so <clears throat> it's good to kind of plan that into whatever trip you might be thinking about. I always forget that it seems to me that the wilderness boundary starts at the trailhead, but it doesn't. It's usually a couple of miles in that you see that border sign. And so if you're thinking about camping close to the edge or close to the trailhead within the first three or four miles you might want to double check on that to see what the condition of the campsite might be like one last look back from the final high point well i made it back to the double falls campground at a little after eight o'clock which made for a pretty strenuous day of 18 miles and quite frankly, I'm going to have to get out my map and calculator to figure out all of the elevation gain and loss. But I'm thinking right now they're pretty close to 3,000 for both. So I don't mind having to wear the knee brace a little bit at the end. And uh, I think I'll probably be fine in a day or two. So got this awesome campground all to myself. And I'm looking forward to a good night's sleep in the back of the truck. And, if anybody's wondering, the beer was still there in the creek, and it's ice cold. Cheers. Alright, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.